With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Tuesday, May 3rd, 2016. The Flush for Flint campaign is now underway. A press release from the city of Flint announces that starting May 1st, residents are being asked to assist in flushing out and coating the city's water pipes. The U.S. EPA, the Michigan DEQ, and the city of Flint are recommending that Flint residents run cold water at the highest flow from their faucet in their bathtubs and through their unfiltered kitchen faucets for five minutes daily for two weeks. Studies show that with the assistance of Flint households, the process of flushing out the system and recoding the existing pipes will significantly improve. Mayor Karen Weaver has said that the city's top priority is still to replace all lead pipes. However, the protective coating is another preventative measure in providing clean drinking water. The cost to run the water for this program is being covered by the state, and residents should expect to see a credit applied to this month's bill. The White House has released a preliminary itinerary for President Obama's visit on Wednesday. Roberto Acosta of the Flint Journal reports that the president is expected to travel to Flint Northwestern High School from Flint Bishop Airport to give an address to the residents of Flint and then is expected to receive an in-person briefing on federal efforts in response to the situation. According to White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest, Governor Snyder is welcome to meet the president on the tarmac at Bishop when he arrives. However, the airport will be closed to all people and traffic during the president's visit, and traffic interruptions are to be expected on I-69, I-75, and all surrounding roads while the president's motorcade is en route. Details on public access to Flint Northwestern High School during the president's speech have not been released. Governor Snyder said on Monday that he has submitted a formal request to meet with the president and Mayor Weaver. However, there has been no word on if the request would be accepted. And according to Ernest, there has been no photo op scheduled for the president to drink the city's tap water. A state Senate committee is expected to transfer nearly $21 million to fund the state's Medicaid and Children's Health Insurance Program. The Washington Post reports that the Obama administration and a House panel approved the move last week and expects to see expanded health coverage and expanded lead abatement for Flint homes. The Medicaid and CHI programs are jointly funded by the state and federal government. Under the expanded health care coverage, an additional 15,000 children and pregnant women should become eligible for the government health insurance starting next week. Senator Stabenow said in a statement last month that the federal government would likely be more obliged to assist in Flint if the state of Michigan applied more funds to the city. And not necessarily as a result of that statement, Governor Snyder has requested another $165 million in state funding for Flint, which includes $25 million to replace water lines from the mains to individual houses. Satoshi Nakamoto has stepped forward to reveal himself, or has he? The Associated Press reports that Nakamoto is the pseudonym used by the alleged founder of Bitcoin, and Australian inventor Craig Stephen Wright announced Monday that he is the elusive founder of the digital currency. Wright has come forward to make his claims not by his own decision, according to an interview with the Associated Press, but by the decisions of others who are harassing his staff, friends, and family to come forward with their connection to the Bitcoin currency. In interviews with organizations such as The Economist and GQ, Wright allegedly proved that he and Nakamoto were one and the same by pointing to a mathematical proof on his own blog that has convinced some, such as Bitcoin developer Gavin Andreessen, that Wright can make that claim. Ellen Gunsirer, a computer science professor at Cornell University, however, argued the point, saying that the proof appears to be just copy and pasted pieces from old Satoshi signed messages and it proves nothing. Wright's claims are likely to have little effect on the cryptocurrency's market. However, Wright is under investigation by the Australian tax authorities, which may make it easier to access the value in Nakamoto's bitcoins. And finally, a software update is to blame for crashing a $286 million Japanese satellite. Literally, crashing the X-ray telescope Hitomi into at least 10 pieces. Hackaday.com reports on an analysis by the Japanese space agency JAXA that shows a software update applied for a sensor array on the satellite disagreed with other packages on the satellite, causing the attitude control system to correct an issue that was not really there. The Japanese space agency reportedly lost on top of the $286 million, three years of planned observations, and a possible 10 years of scientific research, all because of a bad software update. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.